In the last lecture, we understood the concept of short circuit and we discussed two cases of short circuit. The first case was ideal short circuit case and the second case was practical short circuit case. And in case of ideal short circuit, resistance of the path is 0 ohms, voltage across the path is 0 volts and the current through the path is equal to infinite amperes but in case of practical short circuit resistance and voltage both are zero but the current is not infinite but it is finite and now in this lecture we are going to understand the concept of open circuit and like previous lecture we will understand the ideal case of open circuit and the practical case of open circuit and we will begin our discussion with the ideal case of open circuit in case of open circuit resistance of the path is infinite this means you will have a path having the infinite resistance or you can say there will be no path like in this case if you see these two points then you will find there is no path there is no resistance having the infinite value but here we are having the path which is air so air is the path and air is having the resistance which is of very high value so the air will act as the path which is having a resistance close to infinity and when this happens it is very clear that current will be equal to zero because you are calculating current let's say current is i1 you are calculating this current through this path which is the path developed due to air and it is having the resistance it is having the resistance equal to infinity and therefore this current will face the obstruction or you can say the restriction in moving this path and this current will become zero so current i1 is zero through the path provided by the air and therefore current is zero and if we talk about the voltage then it is infinite in case of ideal open circuit it is infinite because resistance is infinite and if you calculate the drop if you consider a very small current very very small current flowing through this path you will find voltage is going to be infinity so ideally the open circuit should have the resistance of the path equal to infinite ohms current flowing through the path will be zero amperes and the voltage across the path is equal to infinite volts and here in this case we are violating kcl kcl is violated in this case and now we will understand how kcl is violated in this case and how the violation of kcl implies the violation of law of conservation of charge in this case we are having a current source and the current source is providing the current equal to i amperes and therefore current i will enter this point and you can see that current i1 equal to 0 ampere is leaving this point and according to the rule current i should be equal to i1 i is not equal to 0 but i1 is equal to 0 this means i will not be equal to i1 and this is like destroying the charges i will explain how it is like destroying the charges you are having the current which is not equal to 0 this means charges are moving to produce this current but after this point the current is becoming zero and there is no parallel path so the current i should be same as i1 there is no parallel path and therefore it is like destroying the charges in this particular case and we know from the law of conservation of charge that charge can neither be created and nor they can be destroyed but here we are destroying the charges so this particular case is not possible practically 
because here we are violating KCL and this means we are violating the law of conservation of charge and this is all for the ideal case of open circuit and now we will move on to the practical case of open circuit but before that I want to clear one point by circuit we mean a network which is closed like in this case you can see that the network is closed but we are using the term open circuit so how can a circuit be open when circuit itself means closed network so don't confuse yourself this clearly means that we are having a path in the circuit which is having the infinite resistance now let's discuss the practical case of open circuit in this case again we are having the resistance equal to infinite ohms current equal to zero amperes but the voltage is not infinite it is finite let's understand how the voltage is equal to finite in this case we are having a 50 volt source and the current it is providing is 10 amperes to the connection of two resistances like this and if we consider this point and this point then you can see that we are having the air as the path this means the resistance between these two points is equal to infinite ohms and this means the current through this path is equal to zero ampere now we will calculate the voltage across the path we are having the voltage source equal to 50 volts and if we consider this point at zero volt potential then this point will have the potential equal to 50 volts then in this scenario you will get 50 minus zero equal to 50 volts as the voltage this point is having the 50 volts potential this point will also have the same potential this point will also have the same 50 volts potential this point and this point will have the same 50 volts potential there is no drop there is no resistance the wire is simply connected this makes this point's potential equal to 50 volts similarly this point will have the potential equal to 0 volts now when you calculate the potential difference across the two points you will find it is equal to 50 volts minus 0 volt which will give you 50 volts as the voltage which is not infinite it is a finite value so in practical case of open circuit voltage is finite this is all for the practical case of open circuit and now we will take one example in which we will understand when two resistances are connected in parallel in which one resistance is having the very high value as compared to the other resistance then the resistance with the high value will act as open circuit why will it act as open circuit because the current will choose this path not this path very low current will flow through the path having the high resistance because the current is having the option of these two paths and it will choose the path with low resistance let's try to understand this by calculating the current in different paths first we will calculate the current in this path let's say the current is i then we will calculate current i1 which is the current through this resistance and then current i2 which is the current through this resistance we can redraw this circuit by considering a single resistance which is the equivalent resistance and we will understand how to calculate the equivalent resistance in the coming presentations but for now simply understand that when two resistances are connected in parallel then the equivalent resistance will be equal to R1 multiplied to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 R1 is equal to 2 mega ohms R2 is equal to 2 ohms so we will have the equivalent resistance equal to 2 mega ohms or we can write 2 multiplied to 10 raised to power 6 ohms multiplied to 2 ohms divided by 2 multiplied to 10 raised to power 6 ohms plus 2 ohms when you solve it you will get 
4 multiplied to 10 raised to power 6 in the numerator and in denominator you will get 2.000002 multiplied to 10 raised to power 6. Now this you can write 2 multiplied to 10 raised to power 6. So when you solve it you will get equivalent resistance is equal to 2 ohms. We have calculated the equivalent resistance and we know the voltage is equal to 10 volts. Therefore current I will be equal to 10 volts divided by 2 ohms and this is equal to 5 amperes. So current I is equal to 5 amperes and now we will calculate I1 and I2 using the current divider rule. We will understand what is current divider rule in the coming presentations but now we will directly use the current divider rule. We will calculate I1 first. I1 will be equal to the main current which is I 5 ampere multiplied to the other resistance. We are calculating current I1 through 2 mega ohm resistance but we need to multiply main current by the other resistance which is 2 ohms and then we will divide it by the sum of two resistances. So we have 2 mega ohms plus 2 ohms in the denominator and we just saw that 2 multiplied to 10 raised to power 6 plus 2 is nearly equal to 2 multiplied to 10 raised to power 6. So we can write I1 is equal to 5 multiplied to 2 which is equal to 10, 10 divided by 2 multiplied to 10 raised to power 6 ampere. When you solve it you will get I1 is equal to 5 multiplied to 10 raised to power minus 6 ampere. And this current is very low, nearly equal to 0 ampere. So current I1 is nearly equal to 0 ampere. And when you calculate I2, using the same current divider rule, it will be equal to 5 ampere multiplied to the other resistance, which is 2 mega ohm, 2 multiplied to 10 raised to power 6. And then in denominator, we will have the sum of two resistances, which is nearly equal to 2 multiplied to 10 raised to power 6. This and this will cancel. This implies I2 is equal to 5 ampere. Main current was equal to 5 ampere and we are getting I2 equal to 5 ampere. So all the current which we are getting from the voltage source is passing through the 2 ohm resistance and nearly 0 ampere current is passing through 2 mega ohm resistance and therefore we can say that this will act as the open circuit because zero current is flowing through this path. So whenever you have a very high resistance connected in parallel with a low resistance then the path with the high resistance will act as open circuit. So this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.